Hello and welcome to What's Your Story? Today we have a very interesting and intriguing guest, a very different than the guest I have uh, most of the time, but it's only apropos that we should have this man being here in Las Vegas because Dennis Reinwald is a sports better, and so we're going to talk about betting. Yes. Welcome. We're so glad to have you here. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah, so, so tell my audience a little bit about what a sports better does. I mean, I, I think I know, but a lot of people might not fully understand because many of us think it's illegal, but we're in Nevada, so it's certainly not illegal, right? Uh, it's not illegal, and I believe it's legal now in about uh, 30 states. Mm. And uh, in Las Vegas, uh, you can go to any casino, fund your account, and download an app. And then you don't even have to go to the casino then. You can, as long as you're in the boundaries of the state, you can make bets on your phone via the apps. Well, times have changed, haven't they? Definitely. <laughs> no no uh, meeting people in the back alley or anything <laughs> like that. You can uh, waltz right into the casino and, and uh, exchange money that way. And as I said, you can just make the bets right on the app. Right. Now, how did you get into this? Well, I, I vividly remember in the uh, mid-60s when O.J. Simpson was playing for USC, my father and a friend of his betting each other on the bowl games mm. and seeing my dad and his friend bet each other $25 or $50 a game. And that I don't know if that tripped a switch <laughs> in my head. Uh, but it stuck with me, yeah. and uh, I always loved playing cards uh, and things along those lines. I truly believe that uh, g people that like to gamble, that it's some kind of gene, uh, <laughs> because uh, there's other people that have zero interest yes. in it. Yes, yes. So, uh, as I said, I think there's something that you have in you that that makes you want to do that yeah I I've gotten addicted to one of these games on the phone recently and and it's I've never gambled you know I've never been involved in that and I started playing this little game on my phone and now it's like I don't watch TV I don't do internet I just play my game on my phone and I said put this down you have to stop because I it's almost like I'm addicted to it uh, you know I think in the, the video th games and other things uh, that are electronic now that uh, they have a way to uh, entice you and uh, I guess they probably do that with gambling as well but uh, as I said I, I, it just seems like it's something that I have in me yes that makes now me you interested started in, in the restaurant business right yes I uh, worked in restaurant business my whole adult life uh, I worked for uh, Arnie Morton at Morton's. I worked for Smith and Walensky, um, Fairmont Hotel, numerous other uh, nice places, and uh, I loved it because I got to meet great people and worked with a lot of great people as well. And I did work in casino business uh, for about eight years. Uh, my favorite boss was Jack Binion. Oh, he was wonderful. Uh, he's a great man. Uh, and uh, still get to see him every once in a while uh, at the hockey games. And uh, him and a gentleman that was president of Horseshoe, uh, Roger Wagner, I uh, still am in contact with both of them, and they were wonderful people to work for mm -hmm. and work with. Yeah, yeah. So how long have you been in Vegas? Uh, six years now. Were you doing sports betting uh, back in Chicago before you came here? Uh, I was, I was doing it, but not as a full time career or full time job. Um, I was just doing it, I guess, for fun. Of course, trying to make money, but um, you know, back then I wasn't concentrating on it as much. I would win, I would lose. Um, always had a job so wasn't an issue mm -hmm. but the thing that changed for me how I bet and made me successful in it was 
setting money aside, I call it creating a bankroll. And you set that money aside and you bet approximately 1% to 2% of what's in your bankroll. If you lose your bankroll, that's it. Now you start all over again. Uh, so it is a great incentive to stay within within the correct parameters so you don't go overboard. Mm -hmm. That is one thing that I like about being out here and doing it on these apps is it gives you uh, control. If you don't have the money, you can't make a bet. Mm. You can't get overextended. Uh, people talk about, oh, will this legal gambling put bookmakers out of business that do it illegally? Yeah. Never, because they offer instant credits, <laughs> and everybody likes that. Yeah. But for control purposes, I really believe that the right way for a person to do it is setting up that bankroll and then betting it legally through the apps. Mm -hmm. and, and to stick within a certain perimeter of a, a percentage of how much you're going to bet. And then if you lose that, you stop until you replace that in your bankroll, right? That's the way I do and that's how what I would recommend to anybody. Uh, I, through my website, I'm trying to uh, educate people a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm giving out my plays for free uh, until April 1st. Uh, I started April 1st of this year, and I'll be ending at April 1st of next year. Uh, anybody who would have followed me, uh, or does follow me, uh, if they bet $1,000 on every game that I've put out so far for free, they'd be up uh, approximately $30,000. My goodness. So uh, I'm trying to show control and also how to win. And eventually, uh, starting next year, I will start charging for it. But I also want to show that I know what I'm doing. Uh, one of the things that I see uh, from other people that do the same thing I do and sell picks is they make crazy claims uh, about how much they win, also crazy claims of how much to bet. Uh, oh, this is a 10-star pick. For me, all my picks are the same. I have certain criteria that they have to meet to become a play, and if they don't meet it, it's not a play. But I bet all mine the same. That also, to me, helps you control things. Mm -hmm. So you don't go overboard and think one thing is better than the other. I've never seen that exist. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do understand why, uh, because it's a sales technique or a marketing technique. Right. Yeah. But it's not something that I believe in. Yeah. Now, you had some notebooks where uh, you were keeping track of, of things um, written down, whereas a lot of people use Internet yes. or... Uh, computers to keep yes. track, right? Uh, I'm uh, old-fashioned when it comes to that. Uh, so what, I what do, do you write in those I buy days? a 99-cent notebook at Walmart, and in my own hand, I have my abbreviations, and I track things that way. Uh, there's a book that I've been featured in. It's called Sports Betting for Winners, and uh the fellow Rob that wrote the book, he mentioned my techniques to some other people, guys that are sports writers or uh, that run sports books, and uh, they laughed and said, nobody still does it that way. Uh, how old is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's not why I do it. Uh, uh, in a notebook versus a computer. Number one, I'm not that great with computers. But the other thing, I have a friend of mine out here in Las Vegas. His name's John D. Domenico. He's oh, a I know John. Great Trump guy. impersonator and a comedian and yeah. other things. And John and I were having a conversation, and John said that when he writes his jokes, he writes them 
by hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why he does that and that I do it the way I do it is things, when they're in your own hand, seem to jump off the page when you look at them. And I, when I write everything by hand this way, I see patterns on numbers. That is one of the thing, ways that I do my handicapping is based on prior events, of course, um, and how, how the numbers work. I've had people talk about, oh, I have inside information that nobody else knows, so listen to me. Well, years ago, I used to bartend at a restaurant in Chicago called Sweetwater. It's where Gibson's Steakhouse is now mm -hmm. in Chicago. And we kept, this happened two separate times. We were out with Joe Necro, or Phil, excuse me, Phil Necro, a Hall of Fame pitcher. Uh -huh. Kept him out till five in the morning drinking and partying and all that. And... The next day, we're calling all our friends. Joe, Phil Negro's pitching today. Bet against them. We kept them out till 5 <laughs> in the morning. The Cubs are going to win the game. And that's when the Cubs played all day games. Yeah. He won the game, beat the Cubs. So we had our inside information. But Throw it was that wrong. out the window. Yeah, yeah. The same thing happened with a, another Hall of Fame pitcher, Gaylord Perry. Kept them out all night. He beat the Cubs. So... That's one reason why I don't believe in inside information. So if they're they're good, they're they're good even if they stay out drinking I all night. I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, but that's really that's really smart to uh, do it by the numbers because then you're you're using a proven method. Is that right? It is. Again, you know, there's different philosophies um, in this. Mm -hmm. There are uh, people that. Um, uh, they do like a, I, I would call it a progressive bet. They'll look at a whole series, uh, like in baseball, where there's uh, three games, mm -hmm. and they'll say, you know, this team, the New York Yankees, as an example, are playing Detroit Tigers. They should win at least one out of those three games. So they'll bet a certain amount. If they lose, then they'll bet more. If they lose, then they'll, yeah, you know, and they figure they're going to win one out of those three. And while that can work, it's not infallible. And once you get out to that third bet, you have a lot of money hanging out there. And that's probably not a very good way to do it, uh, at least, again, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, there's a lot of different philosophies. One of the other things is there's a lot of people that do this. I don't think they're very successful, and I'm not mentioning anybody's name. Uh, I don't really think they're successful with their picks, but they're great marketers. Yes. And they never list their true record. They always say, oh, in the last 11 games, I've won 8 out of 11. They don't say from uh, November 12th back until the start of the season, I did this. Yeah. It's always this small window to prove or to show that they're mm -hmm. uh, good, which really isn't the true picture. It's really fascinating. I, I, as I said, I I love it, and I think it's something that you either have or you don't have. I had people, my friends and my girlfriend, uh, that say, "Show us how to do this or teach us." I, I said, "I don't." You know, there's people on YouTube that have videos about that. That's just not my thing. Right. Um. Uh, so I just. Try and well, I don't. Tell you. I don't see how people can think that if you teach me how to do betting, I'm going to win every time. You know, I, <clears> I don't know. That seems like an unrealistic expectation. Well, I, part of it is um, everybody, uh, almost everybody bets on football in some form, uh, be it um, 
uh, pools at their office or things along those lines. Um, but certain sports like hockey and baseball are different. They use odds. And what I mean by that is a team could be a favorite. Uh, like the other night I went to the Golden Knights game. They were playing Seattle. Mm -hmm. And the Golden Knights were uh, 130 minus 130, which means to win $100, you'd have to put up $130. Now, if you took the other team, if you put up $100, you would have won 120 because they're the underdog. Mm. But so what I'm saying is a lot of people don't delve into it to really know how uh, odds betting works. It's the way horse racing is. Right, right. So. I, I found it interesting that you said um, that those numbers jump off the page at you when you write it by hand because a few years ago I wrote a book called Conquer the Brain Drain, and it was a, a study of our brain. And one of the things that I learned in doing that was that when you do cursive writing, it makes an imprint on your brain. You have a tendency to remember it better. Not printing? Uh, well, uh, no, I don't know about printing. Because I, I print. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do a, a thing. But it's interesting that you, by doing it by hand, it becomes more vivid for you. It does. Uh, <clears throat> another thing uh, that helped me is I walk in the morning for about an hour. It's good for me physically, <laughs> but also for my mind, I don't wear headphones, I don't listen to music, nothing. I just go for a walk. And a couple times, things have popped into my head. You know, when I get home, I'm going to check this and this. Because I think that might work. And what I always do is I test things out. Now, because of computers, mm -hmm. which even though I don't use them to... Uh, track my information I can use them to look up old information right. to test things out and uh, that's what I will do if I come up with an idea I'll go back three years and look at all those numbers and write them all down by hand again to see if my idea will work another thing that I found is sometimes your idea that you tr thought of, it works the opposite way. So what you think is a good idea is really a bad idea, but that's still okay because now you go against that. That's interesting. And you can still make money that way. Uh, one of the things that I found in uh, pro professional basketball, NBA, is <clears throat> bad teams everybody has a tendency to bet against the bad teams and i uh, have been tracking the bottom six teams in basketball according to uh, espn's power rankings and i found that in certain situations take that bad team and it works well for me because everybody thinks they're going to get creamed mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. they're uh, on the road and you know not playing in their home arena and turns out they do okay so uh, sometimes that uh, opposite thinking works yes yes it's a good technique isn't it <laughs> yes <laughs> but, and it, but when you're Doing that opposite thinking, and you know, there are several teams out there that you say are kind of losing teams. Mm -hmm. How do you pick the one that might lose but might win? Well, as I said, I base all of it on numbers, and what I found uh, uh, on these bad teams is when the number is between uh, one and nine they usually do well if it's over nine meaning ten and above it's usually a 
it turns out to be about a 50-50 proposition, mm. which in sports betting, it's an ultimate loser yeah. because they take 10% juice, VIG, there's different names for it. Uh, so that would ultimately be a loser. So you need to win 52, I think it's 52.5% of mm -hmm. the time for something to be profitable in uh, NFL, NBA, college football, and college basketball. It's absolutely fascinating. <laughs> well, I, I like numbers. Uh, not good with uh, trigonometry, things like that, but I'm very good with uh, the basics and numbers, so yeah. I enjoy it. I always say that if in, in school they had told me that mathematics really was about money, I would have probably paid closer attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, because when we when we think about math growing up, trigonometry and those things, we just think, what are we going to ever use of that course. for? And so we don't bother. But if, if I was thinking in terms of money, I would think, hmm, you know, like if I go out and gamble or go out and bet or do something, I, I want to uh, win. You know, of I don't want to yes. just put that money down and have it walk away like I've done many times in my life. Well, you know, that's part of it, too. There's a, a, a gentleman that used to write a gambling column that I knew, John Grahowski. Uh, and John used to say, you know, what are people's re real expectations when they walk into a casino? You know, if you come walk in with $100, if you walk out with 150 that means you made $50. That means you made 50%. Right. Isn't that wonderful? If you could make 50% on all your investments? Yes. But when somebody goes to a casino, they take 100 and they want to walk out with 1000 <laughs> Yes. Nobody wants to stop. <laughs> Unrealistic expectations. Correct. And, <laughs> you know, that's one of the other reasons why I believe in setting up the bankroll. Because let's say you start with 10000 and by the end of the year, you may, you're up to twelve. Well, you made $2,000. That's 20%. That's fantastic. Yes. You wish you could get that from the stock market or, or regular investments all the time. <laughs> and occasionally it does happen with the stock market. But in general, you're not going to get those kind of returns. And uh, be happy with that. Yes. Don't think that you have to hit a grand slam every time. And as I said, that's part of what I'm trying to show people and drill into their heads that... Think of this as like a business investment. Take your 10%, your 20%, and be very, very happy with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that I had to learn. It took, And it took me a long time. I've been gambling for 35 years, and you know, finally uh, 15 years ago, the, the house fell on me, and I woke up, and... Uh, I smartened up. When you say the house fell on you, what does that mean? That means uh, I lost a, a money and had to uh, ask my mom if I could borrow money, which, of course, she helped me out, and I, of course, paid her back. But sometimes it takes things like that to uh, open your eyes. And to learn your and, lesson. And, and mm -hmm. learn your lesson and figure out you're doing something wrong. Maybe you need to change what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting that people do that, don't they? they? They keep doing the same thing in the same way and they keep having the same results and they don't realize, oh, I should make some changes here. Or you have unrealistic expectations. Uh, as I said, you know, everybody wants to knock it out of the park every time with uh, investments, not just uh, gambling, but in most things, and are disappointed if they didn't pick Tesla and they only got a stock that, you know, returned them 10%. Right. We'll be happy with that. Yes, yes, yes. We always have a tendency to want more, I think. Uh, that's human nature. <laughs> that's yeah. human nature. So tell tell my audience again the name of the book that you're in. Uh, we're going to show a picture of it. Okay. Um, and uh, 
and the author of the book? Uh, the book is called Sports Betting for Winners. Uh, the author is Rob Mish, and uh, Rob is also, uh, besides being a, a book writer, uh, he is a daily, or excuse me, a every Saturday columnist for the Chicago Sun Times. And Rob has written uh, two articles on me in the Chicago Sun Times, and they're featured on the website as well as the book. And uh, he's a great fella. Uh, he's written books on Bryce Harper as well, uh, Las Vegas resident. So uh, check him out. He's really a good man. Right. And and uh, let's tell the audience as well how they can get in touch with you or find out more about you. Okay, thank you. Uh, my website is vslasvegas.com. The VS stands for Van Sports. My middle name is Van. That's why I use that for my company name. And uh, you can sign up via email for my free picks. As I said, uh, they'll be free until August, or excuse me, April 1st of next year. And uh, all the articles are posted and some other information about me as well. Great. It's interesting you say you used your, your middle name because uh, you think that Ryan Vault is too hard for yes. people. Actually, your name isn't, isn't that hard, but it's, I can see why using a shorter name would yeah. uh, make it easier for people. Yeah. Well, when Rob, the first time Rob wrote an article about me, um, I didn't use uh, my real name. He used a uh, half of a fake name for me. <laughs> Uh, we called uh, myself Van Smith. Mm. And then after I decided to start this website, obviously uh, I had to be out front and couldn't uh, use a nom de plume anymore. <laughs> I had to use my real real name yeah. so that's why I did it that way yeah well I sure do thank you for being here today and being on the show. This has been fun. Thank you I, I need to learn more about this betting so I can go feed my addiction. <laughs> well, well, we'll help you out with that, I promise. Thank okay. you. Thank you for my being pleasure. here. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for being here with us today. And if you'll stay tuned for just a minute, we have a an offer for you about writing your own story and maybe even having you on the show because a lot of people would love to hear your story. Do you want to write a book, but you're not sure where to start? Well, what better time than now? You can learn how to plan, write, and launch your book in just four weeks. Writing and publishing a book can give you huge exposure, and when done right, will help you establish expertise and authority in your market. When it comes to creating and launching your book, it may be tempting to just dive into the world of writing and publishing, but this can leave you feeling scattered, uncertain of your message, and overwhelmed by your to-do list. This is why so many people give up and books go unpublished and stories go untold. Planning is the answer, and that's exactly what this e-course will help you do every step of the way. When you have a plan in place for how you'll write, publish, and market your book, the process is much more enjoyable and achievable. Go to my website now, judymorio.com, that's J-U-D-I-M-O-R-E-O.com, and learn how. Yeah, I'm going to be